You just gotta rock out to the beat. <laughs> I know. It's a good beat. You so know, you, you gotta do it. It gets you hyped, too. Yeah. When I heard that for the first time, I was just like, oh, putting this in the group chat, this needs to be our theme song for the show. <laughs> It just Yo, you be works. having an age. Mm-hmm. And that, Justin, that's why you're here, because you know what's up. Yep. I try my best. You guys bring it out of me. You un- you unlock hidden features of Justin. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It feels good to be back in the Welcome. fan club we on a so Wednesday. Things, things feel normal. I mean, we, we're missing our girl, CN doll, but... It is. I am very happy to be back. Thank you. We are so happy to have you back. So we, my Wi-Fi is fucked up, so we might have some technical issues, but just bear with us tonight. Hi, Dylan. Hi, Trell. Yes, nine ninety nine. Nine ninety nine. Over under. How many times we hear that? <laughs> you mute it. You mute it. <laughs> P. See, you know what it is. Vince heard us about to talk shit about the network, and he's like, you, you ain't getting these 999 jokes off. Oh, my God. Yo, it's just like you was cooking, and then it, you got muted. Oh, man. See, All right. Let's see, see, what, see what Vince be doing? He who shall not be named. See, you, you know how the vibes go. Dylan know about it at, at, at 1030 that we don't mention his name. Um, but... Yeah, he who uh, wait, it was thirteen dollars for you, Dylan. Like, wait, really? Wow, thirteen dollars. How did they even? How did that even fly? Like, it was nine ninety nine. Nine ninety nine. I guess they didn't run that commercial. (laughs) Australia probably got seventeen (laughs) ninety (laughs) nine. Tokyo got twenty (laughs) ninety nine. Ah, exchange rate. I damn, those are things that we never consider when it's like when you watch certain pay per views or watch certain events like outside of the country. It's like, yeah, man, and that's the thing. But they still have it, you know. They still have the network. Um, sorry, it is so much going on. Uh, but yeah, uh, Justin, how you feeling? That's what P will do when she get back. Uh, check in. So uh, let's check in. How you feeling? I am feeling fantastic. I am feeling dried out and sober. It's been a great weekend of celebrating lake house, boating, tubing, jet skiing, tanning, and all that fun stuff. But we are now rested. We are still mm-hmm. in the middle of our little sabbatical from work, and I'm taking full advantage of it. Yeah, you got a birthday. We did. We celebrated. It was Sun uh, Saturday, but we celebrated <laughs> early on Thursday, Thursday. Thursday, Thursday. You're right. How about you, Brian? How are you that? doing? Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna check in with the boss. She's back. Oh, Who's doing the check-ins? You know, um, how you It's so bad. I I'm like I'm marvelled at how horrible my Wi-Fi is right now, but. Happy oh yes, happy birthday, Justin. You did have a birthday. And I'm I'm good. It's been one of those days, as you can see, my Wi-Fi is is conspiring to, you know, not let me live my best life. But I'm happy to hear that you were living your best life, Justin. You said a beach house, lake house? Lake house. That's how I, I want to bring in my birthday shit. <laughs> and Nicole. I love it. Oh, Vaughn's birthday's tomorrow. Happy early birthday, Vaughn. Happy birthday, Vaughn. Salute to Vaughn. Happy birthday. A lot of cancers, man. Hey, cancer? What's that? Uh, I don't know. Yo, I didn't realize how many cancers So, We know, you know, we we, we know what season's coming. Ryan, be patient. Leo season is is approaching. (laughs) I've been working on my patience, you know. It must, be a, it must be a Leo thing, where it's like Leo's ain't yeah. got no patience. Yeah. Sunday, you can start being like, "Yep, it's yo, they early. like it's our we, time." I want what I want right now, and it's like chill. But when we get what we want, you know, 
Uh, Sean Michaels' birthday is Saturday. Interesting. No wonder Vaughn loves Sean so much. Okay, we Very start, respect. <laughs> Sean's a cancer. Now that makes sense. Oh, hey, Rakasha. I probably <laughs> yeah. missed your comment when my Wi-Fi Wait, so was, was acting so was up. Brett. So but now hey, that girl. makes more sense about the Brett and Sean beef. If they're both, mm -hmm. they're both cancers, it's like, ah, uh, shit, yeah. <laughs> oh, God. All that. Oh, yeah. I'm not. I'm totally not surprised. Wait, what's Brett? We love our cancers, though. Brett, I believe, is the early part. He's a cancer. Of cancer. Oh wow. Well, you know who else yeah. is a Leo, right? It makes a lot of sense now. Who is a Leo? Who? <laughs> oh Hogan. God! It's too early to kick you out the club, Brandon. Like seriously. We just getting started. <laughs> All right, Barack Obama. That see, you could have led with that instead of mm -mm, the, we leave a wrestling. That's a good one. See, <laughs> I mean, this is the fan club. This is our wrestling mm. fan club. So, yo, you imagine Barack hey, Obama to the fan club? I mean, he probably likes wrestling. He he has quoted The Rock before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, they said sometimes that uh, you know, they, I had I the swag like The Rock. <laughs> When I was the president of the United States, but I told Dwayne <laughs> that would be oh hilarious, though. <laughs> Barack Obama in the fan I club. Mean, he ain't doing anything else right now. Like Barack, Barry, pull up. No, he's definitely probably doing something. He probably yeah. is. It's probably like enjoying. He's doing something great. He's doing something great. Yeah, that's but um, I want to thank the crew for holding it down last mm -hmm. week. I wasn't able to make it, but you guys carried on. I want to thank you guys for that. And Krista B was able to join the crew, which is always good. And Dylan, mm -hmm. yes. Everybody drop their star signs because I'm always curious about people's signs. But um, yeah, last week was so fun talking about wrestling chants. I love the fan club because we get the opportunity to to talk about these different aspects of wrestling that makes wrestling what it is. And I think chance and audience participation is a huge part. So I hope we do a part two at some point, because I would love to talk about how much I hate the what chant <laughs> and how much I love the yes chant. And I do agree with Krista about the woo being like maybe accidental, but like that's where magic happens. That's the part about the fan club that I love because it forces you to think and when you have these conversations, it make you think about something that you never thought about. Like, I've been hearing woo probably all my life. Never thought about it being a mistake. But then when Krista B brought it up, I'm like, wait a minute. She's on to something. And, uh, yeah, definitely, um, you know, I think a good rule would be if, you know, the very, very, very rare occasion that Queen PR misses an episode, we run it back because we definitely need uh, Queen PR's intake uh, on this. I was um I've been listening to Stone Cold's book. Well, I finished it, the um Stone Cold Truth. And it's interesting to hear him talk about the what chant. Um and just how it picked up. You know, I ain't gonna ruin it, but just hearing him and you know, hearing from his mouth about it, it, it was it was pretty good. So it's, it's I get I hate it, but I like watching like some classic videos of him doing it. And it's because it was hilarious. Yeah, mm-hmm. It was hilarious, but mm -hmm. now not, not so much. <laughs> so we'll definitely do a part two, and we'll and I'll definitely share my opinions on some of the wrestling chants. Uh, but tonight we're talking about one of my favorite things, which is the WWE Network, mm -hmm. that I have a lot of love for. You know, absence makes the heart grow fonder. I complained about the WWE Network every single day. <laughs> <laughs> to not have WWE content on Peacock and be able to watch it whenever I feel like it. Um, and just, it was just it was part of, you know, something else. So mm -hmm. we're going to get into our favorite shows. We're going to go into how, I think my Wi-Fi is fucking up. So I might be going in and out. We're here, you but clear right now. we're going to get into that. And oh, awesome. We're going to get into WWE Network and we're going to get into some of these signs. But first, I want to share some current TWG content that's going on in the universe. 
a new episode of Schoolin' with Krista B and Pablo the Don is out on Patreon. It is a really good show. You learn a lot about women's wrestlers. And then you get to see two phenomenal people discover and learn and really get into women's wrestling. And it's all about WOW and other promotions besides WWE. And it's something that we've always wanted to do. So I'm very excited that Krista B and Pablo are connecting on that. Sound Off, of course, is taking a hiatus right now. But if you are going to miss Crispa, go to her Twitch channel. Follow her on TikTok. She's going to be streaming more. She's going to be going live more. You know, she's a very talented performer and actress. And, you know, everyone knows what's going on with SAG. So she's going to be showing more of herself. So everyone just show her love. If you see her streaming, show her some love. Throw her some hugs and good vibes. It's always good shit over there. Uh, We just dropped uh, an interview with Janelle from HR. You might know her from Jobber Tears, but she's also a co-owner of the wrestling promotion Battle Club Pro based here in Brooklyn, New York. And she is one of the few women that co-own a wrestling promotion. So I will always give Janelle her flowers when I talk about her and I introduce her to our listeners because she is phenomenal. Her and Krista B went live on Monday to talk about Jobber Slam 3. If you don't know what Jobber Slam is, you are living under a rock. It is the annual wrestling show that battle club pro and the jobber tears podcast puts on and it is always a great time i have been told that it feels like a cookout like family cookout vibes like it is all good vibes any battle club pro show is good vibes and then you add the jobber tears aspect to it it's going to be phenomenal the card is ridiculous sir wilkins is wrestling again so make sure you check out uh krista b's session with janelle she talks about it she talks about the labor of love that it takes to put on these shows and what it means to the community and to the culture and that's available on Twitch, YouTube and your favorite podcast platforms. So please check that out when you can. Follow us on TikTok, follow us on Instagram, follow us on Twitter. We're on Threads. We always have a lot going on. Um so make sure you're all tuned in for that. Heels on Stars. If you are a Woo! fan of Heels, we will be talking about it a lot on this platform. I am a huge fan and season two is dropping very soon, and I cannot wait to talk about it with other wrestling fans in the fan club. So make sure you tune in for that. And I just want to thank everybody for, you know, being in the crew, being in the fan club, being VIP. Because when you have a long day at work, like I had coming on a stream like this with my friend, really means a lot. So I'm glad that we have this escape, and I'm glad that I have a crew that can just step in and make Wednesdays and hashtag TW. And we'll get into the WWE Network, some of our favorite shows, what we enjoyed watching on it. I'm very curious, the first show that people watched when they downloaded the app or whatever, watched. Because my answer might surprise a lot of people. Um, but I want to talk about how it kind of got people back into wrestling and what WWE's media and just all of that. So invite all your friends, come through. We're here. Hashtag TWG fan club. We'll take a break and we will be right, right back. I think altogether, all of the women need more visibility on TV besides like the 10 minutes out of three hours that they get. Um, But that's what it is. I think we just need to see more of that development on TV for us to even care because without social media, that's what, how the WWE universe got behind Dana Brooke, in my opinion, is social media because we can see how bad she wants this. We can see how hard she works, how dedicated she is and how passionate she is. And and we want to root for that underdog. We want to be like, oh my God, look at Dana Brooke actually like getting somewhere. Like, oh shit, she's, she beat out Ruby Riot, Lana to be in Money in the Bank. Like that's a big deal. Um, but I mean, Lana, not so much, but yeah, but she's, you know, way more popular than uh, like a Dana Brooke and for Dana Brooke to actually get that spot and got a a high spot in the match, I think is great. But it's like, what is WWE going to do with that? Like, that's always the sad question. Well, we're back. Um, that was interesting. Uh, it's good to see, uh, Dana Brooke cooking on nxt a little bit she's working with kalani jordan 
in a sort of a mentor role, which I'm always down for the mentor turning on the mentee. What you think, Queen PR? <laughs> ah, she is still muted, ladies and gentlemen. There you go. Yep. Yeah. No, yeah. I, I'm really proud of Dana <laughs> Brooke. I also want to take, like, not credit, but, like, we really show her some love on this platform, and I feel like it gave her, like, more confidence to do her thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, do do I feel that way, too. Because it's like, we threw a party appreciation night for her, and then now it's like you're on NXT, and we, we said, I think it was you, Justin, maybe, that was like she could benefit from going to NXT. I I was just saying it out loud because we had started seeing talent come back from the main roster to NXT and how it did wonders for him. You like perfect example of that was Mandy Rose, where Mandy Rose wasn't doing much on the main roster. She comes back to NXT, becomes NXT women's champion. We completely revitalizes her career. We looked at Mandy in a completely different light. You, you know, Apollo came down. Ali came down, Baron Corbin came down, and we just saw recently mm-hmm. Dom pulled up, pulled up, challenged for the North he American title. He just won a championship down and, there. And won. You know it. <laughs> the North American championship from Wesley, who was a great champion. Great mm-hmm. champion. So Dana was just like, bro, it was right yeah, there. Yeah, he really and Dana was. took full advantage of it. And Dana, you see where Dana's at now, where you're seeing Dana's more on TV. And we yeah. can take a little credit of that because we did give her it. flowers. She pulled up. She heard us for a little bit and brought awareness to the company to see that there's a huge fan base out there. And not too long after we did Dana Brooke Appreciation Night, boom. Yeah, uh, 100%. Mm-hmm. Maybe if we do. Hmm, yeah. so, so no, I'm really still... proud of her. And, um... I was going to say, we start collecting appreciation nights. So, what are the women that need some love? You know, I'm all down for like, Allie right? and, 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 and AEW. That's honestly funny. Mm-hmm. Oh, she's good. Mm-hmm. She's good. That's how the Spotlight series started. Was yeah, kind of like an appreciation night, you know, like with this person's not getting enough love, so we're gonna give her some love. Mm-hmm. You know? I got one in mind. How about Nikki Cross? So, because we are coming up to network. SummerSlam, and so I go ahead, Pete. Remember where I was when I heard that they were gonna have one, and it's a funny story, so I'm gonna let you guys go. But do you remember like what happened? like? When you guys heard the announcement, were you guys hyped? Oh boy. <laughs> so mine's is simple. Mm-hmm. Obviously, I've talked on previous fan clubs on how WrestleMania 30 was my entrance way back into wrestling after a couple of years hiatus. And mm-hmm. watching WrestleMania 30, I believe that was the first one that was on the network. And if I'm not mistaken, so that's yeah, it's where correct. My roommate was schooling me on, well, you had to get the network. I was like, what the hell is the network? And then he's explaining it to me where this is where they're going to start having their pay-per-views, but this is where you're going to have an abundance of their catalog and stuff like that. So that was how I found out about it was through WrestleMania 30. And then the Raws and Smackdowns, those couple of weeks afterwards, where all you just heard was W Network for nine ninety nine. What about you, Brian? So, so the... um. For me, right, I remember being, this is when I say I was at ESPN as a production assistant. So I remember hearing about this big announcement. And I thought about it and I said, okay. You kind of got an idea that a network was coming. And I just remember waiting and waiting and waiting on the price. And I remember thinking in my head, um, how much is it going to cost? Like, hmm, how much am I willing to pay for it? Right. Mm-hmm. And I was thinking, like, I'm having this price in my head, and I'm thinking, like, as long as it don't go like fifty dollars a month, I'm good. You know what I mean? And I'm thinking of like subscription services, and like, how much? How much? How much? And when they said nine ninety nine, I was like, oh my goodness, that's cheap. 
you know, Netflix at that time may have been still seven ninety nine, something like that. You know, um, so I was good with it. And then the first thing, and it was funny because it came on right before the Elimination Chamber. Mm-hmm. So, no, the day the Elimination Chamber was that Sunday. That Monday, the network came uh, was born, and I remember one of my friends said. Yeah, I'm not watching Elimination Chamber. I'm going to go ahead and it's like, check, checkmate. I'm going to wait till the next day. But um, yeah, so I was excited about that. And then, um, uh, yeah, um, it was one of those things where I just knew that I would be, um, hold on, my bad. <laughs> I knew like I was going to be like into it, right? So one of the first things I watched soon as it came like soon as i got it i went back into the archives wcw and i watched world war three because that was like one of my first famous five tapes and i ain't had a tape anymore but what many people may not remember when it first came out a lot of the stuff didn't work it was like up there but it was a lot of lagging a lot wow. of stuff wasn't working right <laughs> facts because i also was one of those that's like the what's the first thing i did i went back into the archives because i was like what did i miss over these last couple years that i need to get caught up on and that was also during a time of social media was really more into gear especially twitter because i remember following twitter during wrestlemania 30 and watching social media explode when taker's streak ended and Mm dan Bryan won the championship so it was one of those that's like all right since this network's now out what do i need to catch up on since it's been a couple a while and the two most requested things were Summer of Punk, mm-hmm. the entire Daniel Bryan storyline leading into WrestleMania 30. Really? Mm. Well, remember, I saw the culmination. I didn't see the journey. Mm. So the, it, Occu- the Occupy Raw, all the stuff with the Authority, the, mm-hmm. the stuff with the Wyatts, the SummerSlam match with Cena, and then Randy Orton cashes in and Triple H turns heel. Mm-hmm. All of that I miss. Yeah. You know, shout out to Brian it says WWE Network was how I was able to watch WrestleMania one. Um, I definitely know so around this time for me personally, I was buying a lot of the DVDs. So the network made me go back and watch a lot of the stuff that I was watching on the DVDs, like actually go back and watch the full matches or the pay-per-views. Uh I know I went through the WrestleManias, but by, by that time, no, I had them all on DVD. I had already like I had collected them. We're talking WrestleMania 30, so yeah, by I collected everything around WrestleMania 26. And I'm talking like the legacy tapes mm-hmm. and having everything. Um, so by that time, like it was just, you know, I'm just adding. I think WrestleMania, I don't even think I bought the WrestleMania 30 DVD because of the network. So that might have been the one I didn't buy. Or maybe I did. I know I bought 33. And thankfully, that's the only way I can watch um, Neville versus Austin Aries. Uh, which was like the match of the night that year, but um, you know, with the uh, uh, for me, it was just being able to go back and watch a lot of old WCW stuff right away, or watching Attitude Era stuff, pay per views that I didn't get to watch. That's what it was for me before I really started jumping into the actual um, the actual uh, like individual shows. Mm-hmm. And um, shout out to Keith Mack, uh, pro wrestler. Me and him was working at ESPN together at the time. And like some of the early memories I have that first year is when the NXT takeover would come on. We would be working at night and, and walking around with our phones. Most times, like if I was going to do a highlight and he had he was a camera operator and he had a break, he would go ahead and bring his um he would bring, you know, bring his phone and we would be watching. Uh, I think we watched a Sami Zayn and Neville. We watched one of those uh, matches. I, was it? What was it be called before it was Takeover? It was something else. They had names like Unstoppable. Yeah, so, yeah. We was watching those. You know, it was well. Be- it was right before the Four Horsewomen era. So ah, you know. okay, you're going that far back. Yeah, yep. Yeah. But um, yeah, that was the best thing. I was worried when the network first came out. I was really worried about the um how the restaurants were going to do things. Because I'm like, you know, restaurants usually, they're using cable boxes and stuff. But, you know, I know here for a while, a lot of stuff was still in business, you know, until, I mean, now they are. Uh, but, you know, but I wasn't going to Jimmy's Seafood at the time. I was going to a place called Loafers. 
because mm-hmm. it was, you know, the food was cheaper. And it seemed like everybody, because it was a perfect spot. It was like not too far from D.C. I mean, it was far enough from D.C., but it wasn't like deep into Baltimore. You know, it was right off of 95. Mm-hmm. See, I didn't, I didn't realize about the watch party. So like later, 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 mm. you know, I'm hearing about Jobber Slam. And I'm hearing about the stuff at Legends and all that, because I didn't even know there was watch parties in like D.C. or Baltimore to begin with. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was like really within the last two years that I found out about. Wait, people actually meet up and do watch parties for this. So mm. I was usually one that like watched at home and stuff like that. And NXT, I hadn't gotten into NXT until about WrestleMania 31 when I started hearing about the Sasha Charlotte match. Okay, and it was like, well, you got this the one women's match on WrestleMania 31, the Bella Twins versus Paige and AJ Lee, which was solid. But then everyone can talk about this match with these two girls from NXT. Mm-hmm. And you gotta watch NXT because they're putting on this amazing shit. I was like, oh, and that's on the network too. All right, so I didn't get to watch any of them live. It's more like I would catch up on them, especially mm-hmm. with the takeovers. It wasn't until Takeover Brooklyn was the first one that I'm like, all right, I'm clearing my schedule. I'm sitting down. I'm watching this one live. This is the first one that they're going outside. They're making a big deal. My girl Sasha Banks is in a co-main event. By that point, I had caught up on. Sasha and the Horsewoman, because that was mm-hmm. when Charlotte was champion. And then Charlotte and um, Natalia had a banger. Mm. Because I was like, yo, why aren't they having these matches on the main roster? Like, Natty had to come back to NXT to get, like, the type of matches that she should be wrestling. Yeah, that's wild. <laughs> yeah, uh, so uh, Queen PR is in the comments. And um, one of the things she said was cool, discover NXT on the network 2015-2016. When the revolution was cooking, and let's start getting to the shows. Uh, she says the first thing she watched was Holy Foley. Uh, did how much of that did you watch, Justin? Very little. So, refresh me at Holy Foley. It was Mick Foley's like reality show. Um, it's just a you got, you got to put that up there. You got to. <laughs> Edit, editors, no. <note. laughs> editors, no. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm like, <laughs> but um, we definitely, uh, boy, it's one of those days, but we're not gonna claim it. Um, but yeah. Uh, so I know, like, I didn't watch a lot of the Holy Foley show, just a little bit. You know, I do. You know, you know, so I remember like Noel Foley wanting to be a wrestler and then changing her mind. Um, I know for me, Table for Three was always something that I was into. Mm. Just to sit there, see the guys or the gals have dinner and just talk about like, you know, stuff and the good times and whatnot. Uh, did were you a big Table for Three fan? I did watch Table for Three. There were a couple that I was like. Oh, so we're going to do this iteration and have them sit down and actually talk about stuff where it was either Legends or you had the New Day, which is one of my favorites, where they're talking about their first iteration of how they come about Mm -hmm. and how they grew closer. I think that was the first content that they were talking about, how they became the trio. And then you had other ones that from either if it was Legends or they were mix and match. I think one was like Trish Lita and Alexa. And I was like, why is Alexa there? But then at the same time, I was like, it became an interesting conversation. And it was cool to just see them just like, either you would have just the legends talking about the back in the days or the current roster talking about the state of where it is now or guys that came up in the indies together and just being like, yo, this is what we were going through when we were going through the towns, you know, making the shows and whatnot. We finally, all three of us worked our way up to WWE. So Table for Three was like actually really interesting because you got more than just like, banter you actually got like we're actually gonna pull the curtain back and show you some things and let some stories go and that was like really informative for me so yes i was a table i was a fan of table for three what about you guys in the chat Let, let's see real quick ah so you guys are also table of three is goaded yes i love watching table of three that brings bring that show back PR says table for three is very insightful, putting people together to have a conversation about really interesting stuff. I do agree with that. Brian so man, I love that table for three had not just the wrestlers, but their families. I remember the wise of Kurt Angle, Matt Hardy and Randy. Ooh, I forgot about that one. Brian soulmate. Which one? The one where they had the wives of Kurt Angle, Matt Hardy and Randy Orton. Oh yeah. I, um, I, for some reason I barely remember it. 
And, but I know, like, just them understanding everything that, you know, their husbands have been through or and or contribute to the business, you know, because uh, I kind of fell off the um, table for three lately. Uh, but I'm, it's one of those things like, oh, like yeah, I need to go back and watch. I'm glad they actually took that over to Peacock. Yeah, that's one that's like, if you're going to have ones you keep, ones you like, all right, we'll move on from. Table for three is definitely one that you keep. Especially like nowadays where it'll be interesting to see like the the roster now intermingle. Yeah. No, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, You know, did you watch Camp WWE? Why well, find that being good, man? Because I know uh, Queen PR was really excited to talk about this one. Ooh, and I'm really excited to get her viewpoints on this because I'm not familiar with Camp W. Like, I would yeah. see the commercials on this and be mm-hmm. like, this actually looks good. I should watch this one day. And then that day never came. Yeah. But that, I'll tell you one thing, though. Story time was really good. Just hearing, like, the stories. I, I, I like animations. You know, this is a lot of times that uh, Bleacher Report era. Mm-hmm. When Bleach Report and Sports Nation and SB Nation and um, was doing a lot of cool animation stuff, so to see WWE jump into that, I thought was uh, phenomenal. You know, <laughs> it's crazy how they actually did that for um um what's that thing called? Uh, I'm so sorry. The oh the what's we did, just did Dark Side of Ring of it, Plain Rock from Hell. Ah. Because the story goes completely different in um, story time. Of course, because story time is WWE, and they're going to make sure, like, yo, all right, we're going to talk about playing right front. Oh, guess what? You're not allowed to talk about this. You're not allowed to talk mm-hmm. about this. You're not allowed to talk about this. We have our additional notes that you can't talk about. So what can we talk about in this play right from hell? We're going to give you the PG version, but not like yeah. the NC-17 that everyone wants the director's cut. Mm-hmm. And, and Queen PR just said it. Uh, you know, as you would say, WWE revisionist history is real. Um, you know, the way the plane ride from hell is just different. You know, it was told in a fun way. Uh, you know, the animation, it was very upbeat when they brought it up. It was more like, oh, yeah. And <laughs> Ric Flair was walking around like this. Roll off, yada, yada, yada. This, that, and the other. And then... In Dark Side of the Ring, it was like, no, he was being a pervert, you know. So it was, it was definitely interesting. You no, know? I, other than that, you know, I did thought, no, it was pretty cool. Um, uh, Brian Soulmate asked about the uh, Scooby Doo movies on the network. Not sure, if I believe they were on the network, but I know the um, I had bought that DVD, Scooby Doo WrestleMania. Really. Yeah, actually, it's around here somewhere. But yeah, I bought that DVD. Uh, and the funny story, so that's I got it for my son. He was four at the time. And so when I took him to his first Monday Night Raw, instead of saying, oh, we are Raw, he goes, we are WWE City. Because that's what they called it on the Scooby, Scooby-Doo movie. Ah, I may have to look into that one of these days and actually look into it. <laughs> not like, not yeah. like I say for Candle Years, like I'll get around to it, and it's like I mm-hmm. never got around to it. Well, I didn't watch a lot of cartoons growing up, clearly, but you know that was that was definitely pretty cool. Um, but you mentioned that? storytelling, and the thing that I honestly stood out to me in the W Network that was like my biggest addiction was mm-hmm. the twenty four seven documentaries. Mm. Like, to this day, I still say that's the best original content that he's ever done on a network. WWE like 24? The, the, yeah, the 24. So it's like you get more of an insight from the wrestlers and you get more insight about their major shows. Like they started doing it for like the WrestleMania 30s on and whatnot, but you also got like insights on the wrestlers. Like for example, one of my personal favorites is the Seth Rollins one because I didn't know much about Tyler Black on the indies and stuff like that. I didn't know much about Seth Rollins in NXT Obviously, I didn't know about early parts of the Shield. I just know from WrestleMania 30 on. So, the redesign, rebuild, reclaim episode where you go through his history, how he grew up, and stuff like that. But then he has this knee injury while he's your top champion. He's going on this hell of a run where it's like, yo, he got to be double champion at SummerSlam. He beat John Cena at a time where people really were not beating John Cena. Mm-hmm. And then he has this catastrophic knee injury that 
if this is any other sport, that changes like an athlete. Where yeah. it's like that's not just one ligament; that's three. Li- that's the three main ones mm-hmm. and whatnot. And you see how just dejected he is that he's missing WrestleMania 32, even though everyone's like, "You're going to be the face of this franchise for many years. You're going to be someone that's going to be wrestling at many multiple WrestleManias." Sit this one out and get right, but it was just killing him because he's like, "I just can't sit this out." Especially we're like, "Yo, I worked my ass off to get here. I was your champion, and then this happened." And this was the first time he had like a severe injury of that magnitude. And then you just watch them how he had to rehab all the way back to where he comes out of Extreme Rules in Jersey. That was the one where Roman Reigns, AJ Styles, main evented. Mm. He comes out with a redesign, rebuild, reclaim. I'm coming back for what I never lost. Yep. And just that type of storytelling that they did from like Seth's history to his rise to him being champion to this knee injury and to his rehab and rehabilitation and whatnot. And those are just, that's an example of just the storytelling and the documentaries that they were given on 24 that were just so fucking good. Like Finn Balor's was so good. Yeah. Roman Reigns, even at the time I didn't like Roman, <laughs> was really good. And there's just so many good ones. And then just behind You're talking scenes, um, uh, when he uh, re- re- wrestled The Undertaker, WrestleMania 33? No, for Roman, no. This was 31. So they did the, that was one of the first early ones where okay. you see him getting ready for the match with Brock Lesnar going into 31 and all the uh, promo stuff. Mm, yeah. Obviously, they, that was like, if you weren't getting the hint that Roman's going to be the face of the franchise for a long time, here's a, mm-hmm. another clue where it's like one of our first five 24 episodes, we're going to spend it on Roman Reigns, whether you like it or not. Yeah. Just real quick, real quick. You know what time it is. It's 8 o'clock. Mm-hmm. So y'all know what we do right here at the fan club. We watch AEW as a family. And right now, Jack Perry is getting ready to take on Hook. You, you, you know, it's, it's capital H, capital O, capital O, capital K. But he oh. has a different look. Um, leather jacket. Now, I hope y'all watching this. Or, or, you know, on mute, of course. But he got the leather jacket. He's got the jeans. He's got... This is who I've been waiting for. You know, I've been very vocal about... I didn't like Jungle Boy. I don't care nothing about him. But, man... Man... <laughs> I am so, baby! <laughs> I want to know what... Hmm? God looks like Adam Cole's stunt double. Like, all he has to do is wet the hair and let it down. <laughs> he looks just like Adam Cole. A little, yeah. A little bit. Yeah, so, um, but yeah, we love watching Dynamite as a family here. So, uh, but I- I'm excited. I'm excited about this new look. Uh, he might. And he this is a rough. special edition of Dynamite. This is Blood and Guts. This is mm-hmm. Boston. Talk to him. And as Queen PR just said, I am so Jack Perry is it. See, like, you know what it was? Because I couldn't believe. He was going to win a fight. So, and obviously he didn't get bigger or smaller, but it's like, you're trying to sell me on that. All right. Cool. It's wrestling. But then he's a jungle boy. First, like, come come on now. You know, like, but I get it. He was for the kids or oh, oh, all that. But now seeing him as this. Yeah, I, I'm ready. Like hook. I like hook. Cause uh, you know, the realness would say hook is a gangster, but, um, mm-hmm. Yeah, so yeah, make sure y'all if y'all watching us as a family, please use the hashtag TWG Fan Club on Twitter or Threads. Even though Threads don't let you do hashtags, you know. But if you want to spill, you know, let's get some of that spillage. <laughs> um, but uh, you can do hey, that yo. on Facebook. <laughs> 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 uh, but yeah, look, use that hashtag everywhere, man. You yeah, know, which, which Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't on spill. There's so many social media apps. Between, and we all going to yes. end up back on Twitter. <laughs> I'm Look. staying on Twitter until Elon really runs that into the ground. I'm Bro. still skeptical on threads, spill. I'm just hearing about recently. And so I'm like, do I want another? Like, I, I still have I ain't leaving word. Twitter. I am 14 followers away from 10,000. I've been chasing 10,000. I'm not leaving Twitter. But, um, Wait, I'm almost so, at seven hundred. Like, yo, can can we run this up to where I can get close to a thousand? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yo, yeah, make sure. Yeah, matter of fact, I'm gonna tweet that. Uh, they got red ropes. 
it's blood and guts. I get it, but they got red ropes. That's interesting because that's collision colors. Um, but yeah, you know, uh, and it's also Shark Week, so it's like yo, the blood will ooh, be flowing. See, the this guts is... will be flying. Mm hmm. Um. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, hook and yeah, hook is that he's on it. But um yeah, so you know, back to the network. Um earlier in the comments, you know, we roll in here. Uh Queen PR posted about JBL show, JBL's uh talk with the legends. Let me tell you about that one. Please. As a video editor, I appreciate it the first time when they told us that this was coming and they talked to Booker T. Because if you remember the uh commercial. It was like, so what about Hogan? And then Booker T's eyes was like, so it made you think, <laughs> they sold you thinking like, oh, Booker could go in. You know, because, all right, we into sports commentary, right? Mm -hmm. And we're heavy into, like, the Athletes podcast. Mm -hmm. Did you see Jeff Teague's social clip that went out earlier? I did. So uh, I would give a shout out to Kaz um, because he said, look, Af superstar podcasts are fun, but let's get more role players because they got the stories. You know, you imagine the player on the bench, like shout out to my boy, one of my mentees, Devin Ashby. He wrote a book about PG County versus Montgomery. I think it's PG versus Montgomery County or something, but he wrote the book about the football players. And he mm -hmm. said, as the reason why he's a good sports reporter because he was a bench player. He was a bench warmer. And he got, like, he was able to learn. And I bring that up because when you, WWE, again, ahead of the curve, right? Before athletes were having their own shows, the wrestlers were having their own shows. The, and we should say professional wrestling as a whole because, you know, it was obviously outside WWE. Like, Stone Cold was doing his show outside WWE. But seeing WWE understanding that, they said, okay, fine, we'll put stuff on our network. So when JBL had his show with the legends and it made you think Booker was about to really spill some tea on Hogan and how he felt, which it didn't happen. Um, but it was still cool. And right here, Pia, uh, R says, I love the JBL show. I got to know Ron Simmons, Medusa slash Alundra Blaze, Booker T, and many more. You know, one of the things, with... this is the club, right? I mean, go for it. I can say. Ain't no, ain't no sanctions here. I can say what I'd be thinking. <laughs> yeah. um, when the DJ goes, er, stops the music, is like, well, <laughs> go for it. See, this is uh, this is that don't get kicked out. If all right, deal. If you gotta kick me out, the means you hop in and and simply kick me out. JBL was so good at his job as a heel, right? Mm -hmm. If it wasn't for his friendship. And his deep rooted love for Ron Simmons. I would have thought, you know, he was, you know, racist. That's how good he was at his job. And sometimes I still be looking like, you know, we do the Fox News stuff and whatnot. I'd be like, eh. doing the Fox News stuff, you got the the whole angle with I'm kicking the Mexicans out the country. You got mm -hmm. That clothesline that people have infamously talked about, where he be like stiff as hell mm -hmm. in the ring, sometimes be potatoing the fuck out of people just for no reason, and it's like, mm -hmm. yeah. But then it's like, and and I don't want to do the whole. Well, you got one black friend, so you know. But I'd be like, eh. but you know, you can see like, and and that's the thing. He was more of a bully, you know. Um, I do know like the, the stuff with Eddie Guerrero. He said Eddie was feeding him them lines, you know, and I, I had a chance to talk to him before. And I was like, OK, I get like he's a genuine person. Do believe he was a bully. Obviously, I believe some of those stories. But you're right. Doesn't mean he's not racist, um, you know, but like, yeah, he said Eddie a lot of times was like, yeah, Holmes, say this. He's like, Eddie, you're going to get me killed. Oh, say it. And but we know, like, you have to be a certain type of person. I don't want to use the word, the CR word, but you know what I'm saying. You got to be a certain type of person to be in the wrestling business and to mm -hmm. go as far as a lot of people go. Um, and I thought JBL was um, very good at his job, uh, but I definitely thought the show was good. I loved, uh, you know, especially, you know, just the way he, his style of interviews. I really wish, like the way it was presented to, it looked like something 
and I'm gonna use ESPN because they're the worldwide leader in sports, but it looked like something that belonged there, right? Um, which obviously WWE has tons of people, and they're in the same place, so they exchange people all the time. Yeah, um, right. you know, it's like okay, like when I first started, it was a few people that was like, Oh, yeah, they just left to go work at WWE. And most people say, Oh, now you're closer to home. I'm like, I don't want to work there. I, want, I like I like what I do, like I like loving the company, but um, you know, but that that style was it wasn't just like okay we're just gonna put something together like it had the, the rundown it looked like you was watching first take or watching um uh mike and um, yeah the early days of mike and mike you know what i mean mm-hmm. <laughs> of course so basically okay. structure <laughs> yeah like yeah um but you and, and that's the thing wrestling is that weird space how do you elicit a reaction you know what i mean um and a lot of times that's the name of the game can uh-huh. you get a reaction out of a crowd can mm-hmm. you go out there good bad and different get the people to react especially if they're paying harder or money to come pull up and see you in person can you get a reaction or is it going to be crickets and you know if it's crickets out there that means yo you about to get a short it's about to be like apollo where you get the hook say hey, man about to come out there and be like nah come off come off come off this ain't working <laughs> all right so this came up uh pr just put in did y'all watch countdown i love that um a lot of this stuff honestly so i liked it a lot it was a lot of what kind of content i was creating at the time um Mm -hmm. whether it was i was writing or even um you know some of the earlier stuff with the wrestling realm uh it was a lot of that type of like countdown content and so i could appreciate it especially coming from the mothership of wwe putting together their list because that was always great content too like you can simply debate it you know i when i had the first show that uh, shall not be named with my cousin who shall not be named we did an episode on a top 50 wwe superstars dvd and that was because i didn't like it, especially as high as um, batista was in the list uh shout out to mike mike just came in we love when mike show up uh shout out. Yo, I, I definitely uh, miss Mike at BlurCon. Uh, you know, he was in the D.C. area. Wait, he was uh, there? No, I'm saying I missed him from, you know. Uh, <laughs> I was say like, oh, man. I man. like good people, man, you know? So. Um, I did watch Countdown. Like, you said it perfect. It was like mm. people love lists and people love to aggregate lists. Mm-hmm. They're bad and different. We see it on Twitter all the time when Rolling Stone likes to put out their hip hop list, where yeah. it's best rappers of all time, best rap duos of all time, best rap beats of all time. And we all go collectively like, who the fuck put this list together? Because why is this over that? Why is this omitted? Why do you mm-hmm. even have this in the top 10? And, but for WWE to put their list together of their countdowns and whatnot, it was like, it was always good because you knew it was WWE related stuff. Maybe they'll interject some WCW stuff. So you always had to go in with that box of, all right, now, the best finishing moves of all time, you just got to remember, it's going to be strictly WWE, maybe WCW's included. That's it. They're not going to go Indies and, you know, Tiger Drivers or Melzer Drivers or none of that. It's going to be just this. But it was fun. It was content. Mm-hmm. Something that's like, oh, this is come up? You know, I like music. Let me go. What do you guys think is your top 10 theme songs? Okay, let's sit down and watch this. Mm-hmm. Or finishing moves because I absolutely love the Dully Boys 3. I've always said that's the best tag team finishing move of all time. I'm thankful that the Usos use that now with the 1D, the one and done. Mm. But then some people don't have the 3D up on their number one. Some people may have that top five, top ten. And it's good yeah. to see how those lists are go on those countdowns where it's like it's great content, especially for like the time that they give it. Mm-hmm. I'm always here for it. No, nah, facts, bro. Facts. Uh, shout out to uh, you know, we definitely gotta give you a merch plug. Shout out to the hoodie, y'all know for your wear.com slash those wrestling girls, or you know what, go to those wrestling girls.com. <laughs> you get all you need right there. You get the links to the websites, you get the links to the I said links to the websites, <laughs> you get links to the social handles, there you, you get links to the merch, you get links to the YouTube. So those wrestling content, girls content uh-huh. content it's a one-stop and shop the patreon join me on as a patron patron patreon member um but yeah go there sign up look 
do the five dollar tier, man. I know it's look, I know you can get everything for a dollar, but do the five dollar tier. Shoot. Support these wonderful ladies. If you All can right. buy an energy drink, you can subscribe for the five dollars. It's that <laughs> simple. Yeah, facts. Um <laughs> <laughs> right, it's so not the, not the... It's making your skin pop. Look, 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 let me let me it's let me give my nice brother glow. his flowers real quick. Oh, go ahead. I like <clears throat> yep, no, it gets... <laughs> so the thing about Justin that people don't see, as I believe, oh no, they still wrestling. Thing about people that just the people thing about Justin that people don't see and understand is one, he gonna support everybody, but he's gonna take time to make sure his content. And anything he is a part of is perfect. You know, he's going to take time to study the content, study the craft. So he don't just be getting on here just saying anything. He's going to make, look at like, just look, everything is intentional. Now he got a little Yankees reserve fan, fans only, you know, I get it. You know I mean? I don't hate the Yankees. I'm just saying, you know, um, but he also, you know, he, he got the colors match. It's not just white lights. He's out of like, like a little pink, little tint. You know, uh, so he's not going to put himself over, but I'm gonna put him over. God dang it, he's got uh, look at like just look at the back, right? He's got the wrestling club, he's got the those wrestling girl shirt, he's got the belts. So shout out to Justin, and you know he got we got Bret Hart, we got, Brett, we got Stone Cold walking out at WrestleMania over mm-hmm. the reserve parking Yankees one. We got Sasha and Bianca from WrestleMania 37, and then to the it's right. You have uh, Becky and Bianca from WrestleMania 38. And over here on this side, we actually have an autographed Sasha Banks sham mm. writer special that I got at WrestleMania 38. Yeah, and as directed, sign yeah, up it's, for his it's, YouTube channel. You, you know what it is? It's, I always make sure like I want things to be as best as possible, but I also don't want to just jump on the platform and just ramble. You know, I want to be able to offer something. Because the best thing about social media and the best thing about content creating is it gives people platforms. But the mm-hmm. problem, the worst thing is it gets everyone a platform. And some people don't need mics, don't need Twitter, don't need to get takes off because it's like either they like to troll or it's not formulated enough or it comes out of different, like they haven't really thought it out. Yep. And it's one of those, like, if I'm going to do it, I'm not going to half ass it. I want a full yeah. ass. <laughs> exactly justin we got breaking news we have a brand new ftw champion jack perry has just defeated hook to become the ftw champion uh so um Is yeah that Hook's I, first singles loss i believe so i believe so we're gonna get back to the wwe network real quick i just want to touch on a couple things for those who may not be watching the comments and may just be listening, uh, or if you're watching on replay um, on YouTube, Queen PR says, should we re-release the TWG Attitude Era Collection? I'm going to go ahead and say, yes. I have yes. a shirt, but um, I got to be honest, the shirt a little too big. You know, I got the gray one. And so I want one that fit. I want a large. That was a 2X. Uh, but I, I, I want a large. You know, I bought it uh, around Ooh, the pandemic look at time. You flex on yourself with a slimmer. <laughs> it's like, nah, we ain't two X no more. We a large, large yes. in charge. <laughs> but uh, you know, I got the other one, the one that Justin has back. I got the same color, pink one, and I got a gray one. Um, so make sure. But uh, yeah, copper hoodie, copper shirt. Uh, but I would definitely love to see the add to their collection, possibly a mug. I, I, I'm asking all this stuff, and she's not here. Is she gonna get over me? That, that <laughs> sounds. It sounds kind of like a fall exclusive. It's like <laughs> if you're going back to school, you're mm-hmm. going back to college, you're going back. Little to attitude. Start, a little attitude, especially when the weather is about to start changing. It's about to get a little colder, a little nippier in certain mm. regions. It's like, yeah, there may be a little attitude behind this. Like it was just eighty. Why is it fifty now? Yeah, definitely. So, um, yeah, let's do that. Make sure y'all cop the merch and guess what you know what we're gonna do right now we will give you an opportunity to go browse the website while we take a quick break and then we will come back and we're gonna talk about the monday night wars baby but we'll give you an opportunity to get some merch matter of fact here's a message from krista b hey what's up y'all it's your girl krista b one half of those wrestling girls and we hope that you're enjoying this current episode that we have for you you know i had to come in here interject and plug ourselves real quick 
We want to tell you about our merch exclusively on foryourwear.com. That's right. For Your Wear has all the Girls Wrestling Girls merch that you want and need, not only for yourself, but for your friends, your family, and your loved ones. We have t-shirts. We have hoodies. We have tank tops. So please go over to foryourwear.com to make sure you get those exclusive merch, those exclusive deals, and tell them that TWG sent you. Time I hear that music, it takes me back to a place. Um, you know, when the TWG, those wrestling girls got me through a lot of um a lot of binge podcasts I was listening to when you know I was going through things and I was just playing Madden and I would listen to them. So that music just took me back. That was back in the earlier days of Lamar Jackson's run when I was fantasy booking him of having good wide receivers, but now we got a good one. OBJ coming to the Ravens. Yeah. <laughs> Ready to make one handed catch down at the bank, baby. I just hope he stays healthy, dude. He's so I've always see, you liked. Just, you, I just want him to stay healthy. You you just you just had to go there. You just had to go there. But you know but, uh, what you were talking about TWG merch right now is Adam oh. Cole and MJF because right now they're <laughs> they're showing a segment of my personally my favorite thing in AW right now. The mm-hmm. The pairing of Adam Cole and MJF, the tag team, we didn't know we needed until they put it together. And it looked like they are eating some hot food and struggling. <laughs> and struggling is probably an understatement because MJF looks like he wants to cry and Adam Cole's in his comfort zone. Because if you follow mm-hmm. Adam Cole, he likes spicy foods. Mm-hmm. Yeah, shout out to Adam Cole, man. One of the nicest people. Um, you know, I've known, I ain't gonna say know him as in like we're friends, but you know, just been sort of connected with him since 2013, 2012. First time I ever interviewed him. And uh, he was just always a cool person. Uh, but yeah, you know, uh, one thing about the network, it's easy to navigate. You know, it what really I loved about is. it, and I know P said she talked so much shit about it. I really didn't. It, it, I, it was one of those things after we had it for a while, I was like, okay, it's always going to be there, right? Because you just like, Netflix still around, Hulu still around, we know. Spotify app still around, Apple Podcast still around, iTunes still around. You know, I mean, they it used to be all under one. They moved it. You know, I never thought the network would leave. And, and if I could just tell her, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that all my friends talk shit about you. <laughs> Please come back. I mean, Even though here's it wasn't the thing. For the- the network had its reasons why we talk shit from time to time, but when you really That's look anything. at the totality mm-hmm. of like, you said it perfect, the accessibility, the fact that I can go watch any of the WrestleManias and they're easy to pull up. All the mm-hmm. NXT takeovers or just NXT shows, they're easy to pull up. A lot of mm-hmm. their content, easy to pull up. Peacock. This, this is the hashtag. Is, Real quick, is, I'm going to tweet that. <laughs> go ahead, I'm sorry. Yeah, definitely the hashtag, but like Peacock sometimes is like, What's episode 33, episode 34, episode 35? And it was just like, why do we have this fucking episode stuff? I don't know why, but now all of a sudden it's like, I'm doing what you, like you're doing, Brian. I was like, I miss the network because this would be so much easier. Boom, boom, mm-hmm. boom. And then I can find it versus the cock is like, I got to search through the cock. I got to go drive through the cock and like so many different layers and layers and layers of just like, what the hell is this? What this is unnecessary. You make this more complicated than it needs to be. You know, you know that I can't search wrestlers, right? It, it gives me very minimal, mm-hmm. you know, like I, I want to be able to search wrestlers names and I want to have their matches pull up just like I do on WWE.com. That's I've the felt. biggest thing is mm-hmm. the matches, especially if you're watching a WrestleMania that has 13 different matches or more. Mm-hmm. Where the network, you can skip ahead to certain matches and they already yeah. have time stamped. You want to watch, all right, let's use WrestleMania 35, for example. Obviously, you have Seth Rollins, Brock Lesnar in the opener. But let's say I mm-hmm. want to skip ahead to the women's tag team match. Boom, they had that time stamp. Let's say mm-hmm. I want to skip ahead to Kofi and Brian. Boom, they had that time stamp. Let's see if I actually want to remember Finn Bal- Demon Balor and Bobby Lashley. Boom, they have that timestamp to where I can skip ahead versus the network. I mean, not the network. Peacock doesn't have that. You've got to basically fast forward, rewind, and find it yourself. 
Exactly, exactly, you know. Um, and one last thing I'll say about that is if they would have just said, okay, we're going to sell you to Peacock. But when you click WWE, it would have took us to the network. It would have been fine. We would be okay with that. That's it. That's all you have to do. Okay, and I know it's a switch. I know that network's still around. I know it is. Turn the switch. Turn it back on. Give it to us. It was for the fans. Um, yes, Vince, the one of the few things you got completely right. So you just named him, and and uh, I, I, I forgot we put him in the box. I'm sorry, he who shall not be named. <laughs> but I, I want to give him his credit because this yeah, is that's one of those true. that was a very big gamble, especially at that time where you pay for pay per views, especially UFC fights you pay for, boxing you pay for, other wrestling um top shows you paid for. Mm-hmm. He's like, you know what? I'm going to roll the dice. I'm going to create my own network because we have our own content that can uh, fulfill the network and keep the masses, you know, satisfied. We have content for everything. Plus, instead of paying $60 for this pay-per-view that's going to have people going, do I really want to watch Elimination Chamber? Just nine ninety nine, mm-hmm. boom, and you get it for free. Well, you got So what you watching during the streaming era? The and the illegal streaming era, the illegal streaming. Mm-hmm. So that's what before WrestleMania thirty, because then obviously the easy answer. Is yeah. No. All right. So that was the thing, right? All right. So I mean, this is the club, right? My mm-hmm. thing, Don't based on out. if I was going to buy a pay per view, was based on how bad I wanted to see it. So I knew on Sundays when wrestling, pay- I was watching, right? If it was something I really wanted to see, so no, if it was Royal Rumble, WrestleMania, or SummerSlam, I was either going to order it or go watch it with a friend. But mm-hmm. you know, at that time, we're getting pay-per-views every month. So simply, and, and, and we used to have on Facebook, who got a link? Then it got mm-hmm. to a point people say, don't share the link, DM it to the person because you don't want to get the group shut down. So when I first discovered, I remember the night I discovered the, the first thing, Brother Hugh hit me up, and he told me, your girl Alicia Fox just won the belt. And I'm like, you watch the pay-per-view? Because Hugh ain't never order pay-per-views. And he's like, no, nah, I found a link. That's when I found out about it. And ever since then, so this is maybe 2000, 2009, 10. Ever since then. I was always like looking for links. So every pay-per-view after that. So then WWE said, all right, fine, then people going to get links and stuff. But they already on their computers. Let's go ahead and just take them to where, go online and pay for it. You're, going, you're already online streaming. So that was mm-hmm. the thing because people was illegally getting these links. Same thing people do for boxing and whatnot. You find the link, you share it, whatnot. So yep. that's how I found about that's how I started, and you know it was it was a genius move, um, you know. As I'm looking into the uh, comments, um, but yeah, you know one of the things that uh and and, and so right here because uh, this is gonna take me to the next point. WWE did well buying content from all the territories, ECW, WCW, etc. I was just listening to um I ain't finished Eric Bischoff's latest podcast episode, but he talks about the invasion. And we obviously know that's the story that's been told and told and told again, right? But one mm-hmm. of the things he brought up was that WCW didn't do well in the home video department. Um, and I think it was mainly because of their marketing. But they didn't sell, like, I can remember growing up in 98, 99, going into Sam Goody. Or uh, I didn't go into Best Buy that much then. But definitely Sam, Sam Goody. Goody. It was in the mall, man. Uh, what was that? Um, FYI. Or Saturday, uh, Suncoast, but going in those stores buying wrestling tapes, and you mm-hmm. always saw WWF tapes. You rarely saw WCW tapes, unless like the Starcade, you know. But WWE always had like up to date stuff. And 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 Pete said it right here: home video game on lock. My first, my first, um, uh, shout out to Scallywag Twenty Six uh, coming through the club. Yeah, it was definitely a throwback. Um, FYE, you know, that's why I got I got a lot of wrestling tapes from. Um, and, and you know, City. yeah, it's actually still one here, still FYE here in uh in Arundel Mills Mall. 
So, uh, yeah, I actually got like a Funko Pop from there once recently. Um, but the thing is, like, you know, like I said, just getting a lot of those tapes. And my first rental from Blockbuster, um, Earl's videos ever was the 93 Royal Rumble. Um, but that's what WWE used to do, the Coliseum videos. And so this, again, ahead of its time. And by them uh, buying all of that content, like Vince McMahon would pay, what, a couple million dollars for WCW. But it wasn't necessarily the wrestlers. Like, if you told Vince McMahon he could buy WCW but not have the wrestlers, but he could get the library, easily would have done it because of what was just mentioned earlier. Not only buying the territories, but they got all the content from the territories. And that takes us right into the Monday Night Wars. The Monday Night Wars, though, I had the original DVD. I want to say it came out like 2005, 2006. You know, the one with Eric Bischoff and Vince on the cover um, where they go into the story. But what I loved about the network was they came out in different parts. And I actually want to go back. I hope that's still on because I would love to watch it again. But um, they came out in different parts and they talked about the history. But this time you got more conversation from people like Sting. I believe in uh, DDP, obviously DDP, but, you know, I thought that was put together very well. Did you watch a lot of that? The Monday Night Wars in general or that? Actual no, documentary? The, the, the documentary. So I remember it, but it's been a while. So I have to go back and rewatch because when you okay. say Monday Night Wars, I take I take myself back to that was high school for me. That was junior mm. high. Whereas like I was one of those kids where it's like, fuck, I got to flip back and forth. So I got either this TV running one show and this TV running another show, which used to piss off my parents, or I'm flipping back and forth. And it's like, all right, this one's a commercial. Okay, now we're over to WCW. Okay, that's on a commercial. Now we're back over to WWE. Or you're just picking one for the day. It's like, all right, uh, WCW is kind of missed, so I'm going to go with WWE tonight. Mm. You know, when you sit back and think about, like, those days, do you get offended when people come through and say the attitude error wasn't all that i do because it's like bro i remember when stone cold was over like rover because not only was he just carrying we he would pop up on mtv for celebrity death match because that was one of their most popular shows at that time where these clay these claymations are fighting each other and stone cold is doing commentary and you're telling me there's gonna be multiple seasons of this shit on mtv yeah, yeah. Or he would pop up on Bernie Mac show, or he would pop up here and there, or Hollywood Squares, where fucking A-list celebrities know who the fuck Stone Cold Steve Austin is. Exactly. And this comment right here. Um, I, I want to go back to comments in the chat. If you ever rented a WWF video oh, cassette from Blockbuster. 1,000%. Not only did I grow up on Blockbuster, and when I lived in the Bronx, I lived mm -hmm. next to one. Ooh. I remember when you could make your own custom videos at Blockbuster. Wait, What? Yeah. You Never remember? knew that. Yes. You can make your own custom video. I think it was like a couple, like either like up to two minutes or something like that. But you can make your own custom video at Blockbuster. They had that used to be a thing. So those Blockbuster cards came in handy because you were either getting movies or you're getting video games. My cousins were more into the video games. I was more into the movies. And then once they started putting WWE related pay-per-views, especially the ones we couldn't order, it's like... Yeah, we don't got fifty dollars for a pay per view, but we do have five dollars to rent it. Mm -hmm. and my parents are very good at that. Where it's like you can rent it, it's like say less. So I used to do um, what I would do is anytime I rented a tape from Blockbuster, copy that bad boy. Uh, um, didn't understand why people hated Halloween Havoc '98 uh, because you know there a lot of our thoughts are often dictated by having the internet now because mm -hmm. if you if you watched wrestling and then you had your group of friends who talked about it some stuff that was quote unquote bad you don't realize till now like when i talked to my god brother about stuff i was like yo you know people said this was bad like if i tell him like when i talk to him about the wolf pack he's like really because we thought it was the coolest thing but you know when you're younger so like the halloween havoc i'm thinking i remember the build up to it right you talking Steiner versus Steiner. That's the main event style match. Mm -hmm. Hall versus Nash. Sting versus Bret Hart, a dream match. Hogan versus Warrior 2. 
finally the rematch, and DDP versus Goldberg. Mm -hmm. That right there made me... So not being able to watch that live when I had the opportunity to finally get a chance to see it by going to Blockbuster? Oh, yeah, give it to me. WrestleMania 15. The WrestleMania that I wanted to watch so bad, and I don't think I got a chance to rent that till maybe like a year or a year and a half later, as soon as I could. Rented it, had the VCR TV combination, had another VCR, blank VCR. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah. Man. One's playing, one's recording. Bingo. Every time. I was going to get my $5 worth. But, um, and, that, and that was the thing, you know. And, and, yeah, reliving the WrestleManias was such a magical experience, uh, you know, getting the network. That's what uh, Queen PR says. And that was the thing right there, being able to go back, watch all of it. You know, and, and like I said, with the Monday Night Wars, just seeing those stories, just seeing that documentary, hearing how it was told, you know, you got this one, you got that one. Um, and the fact is, because of the docuseries, they could break it up in parts. So that's what I like better. DVD, you got, what, 75, 80 minutes, maybe 90, where this, you could give me episodes, you could break it down. The same with the Ruthless Aggression series, which I want to go back and watch again. Uh, you know, and that, and that was a lot of stuff that I always uh, loved and appreciated about the network you know um just being able to get a lot of those series getting different voices you know and uh, i just uh, just wish they kept it on you know um and, and you know i will say for peacock for me if anything it helped me watch the office i don't watch the office without <laughs> because wwe goes over there and i remember during the clubhouse days everybody's like nah you gotta you you can you got to go watch the office. I'm like, well, I got Peacock because of wrestling, you know. So, you know, the so office any... is hilarious. That's one of my shows. It's like, <laughs> yeah, NBC, you got this right. Mm hmm. This is such great shit. Yeah, absolutely. And then CMP's um, comment about reliving WrestleMania is that something that I got that idea from. Shout out to Andreas Hell because I see TWG also did a um, episode recently where they interviewed mm -hmm. Andreas Hell from the corner podcast boring news and all the stuff that he does. And he was very vocal about where like, if it's one of the big four seasons, he goes back and watches it. So if it's rumble season, then he goes back and watches all the rumbles. If it's mania season, he goes back and watches all the manias. And I got that idea too, where I do the same thing, but then I also watch the 24 specials cause they did one for 30, 31, 32, 33, 34. And those ones. So you get to see that behind the scenes of like, for example, WrestleMania 30, they show like, when Taker, they didn't show Taker come back through a gorilla, but like Vince be like, I need some help over here. And like everyone rushing back because Taker came back and cussed and whatnot. And yeah. those are things that you never really got on those, um, on those WrestleMania tapes that you will like buy or order, or even like the DVDs. But that was something that like they started doing recently in like the last 10, 15 years where it's like, we're going to quietly show you these things that you just can't get on the tapes. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and that's, oh, go ahead. No, I was going to say, those are the type of contests where it's like, you can see like WWE Evolve, but like back then, you know, you get the tape for SummerSlam 91. You're not getting like, did Warrior legitimately get fired when he went back through that curtain? Or is that just say so? Mm-hmm. No, so like, I think 2011. So I was at, um, I started working at Best Buy in 2008, right? Mm -hmm. And towards the end, the beginning of 2009, they had the SummerSlam DVD set, right? And I was like, wait, they, so in retail, if they don't sell everything, they'll send it back to like vendors. Mm -hmm. Like if certain things just sit on the shelf too long, they send it back. And I remember that one day the lady was like, oh yeah, I'm about to send this back. I said, wait, this is going back? She's like, yeah. I said, hold on. I'm going to buy that tomorrow. <laughs> and so where like the employee discount uh at best buys invoice right so like a hdmi cable i know i'm letting out secrets here right here exclusively on the fan club so if you got a friend that work at best buy ask them to let them use the discount um no big discount on tvs but so like for instance right this cable might cost me 20 bucks but if i go in a, if i work there it's gonna cost me two or three dollars so it all depends on what they pay for it so like i remember that dvd set would have cost like 150 but i paid like 119 so it's like not much markup but enough and the network relieved me of flipping dvds now 
I still have them because, like, you know, power go out or something, bad storm, boom, I just pop in a DVD player. But um, I don't go back and watch all the pay-per-views, like, leading up to I did that because WrestleMania 31, I thought legit was going to be terrible. And that was so exhausting. Mm-hmm. But I uh, but I do watch something. Like, WrestleMania 31, I started the end of January, literally watch match one to match whatever and watch one all the way by time i think i had finished a week before when i got to wrestlemania 30 the week before 31 um but yeah what where said best dvds feel like a million years ago uh, Bro, you know i still have boxes in my stores that i'm about to send i'm about to do a detox of my storage tomorrow where i have boxes of dvds because i used to be like a heavy dvd collector and as mm-hmm. a movie head i have Ooh. like multiple dvd towers that was just filled with like movies tv shows i know i have mm-hmm. every season of entourage somewhere in there i have all three nice. seasons of chappelle show somewhere in there i have film collections in there so it's like yeah i need to take those to goodwill because the i can't even tell you the last time i used a dvd player i'm, I'm keeping mine it's it's a, it's a nice visual especially like all the wrestling dvds i got you know and, and some of them you get right to the matches exclusive like i got like i'm looking at war games right now the blu-ray like, a lot of them's blu-ray too mm-hmm. You know, because I remember that was a big deal. Uh, Survivor Series, no. WrestleMania 24 was WWE's first Blu-ray. And I remember, I remember getting it then. I remember that because I got that from my brother for Christmas. That's one of his first wrestling tapes that I ever gave him. It was a Blu-ray mm-hmm. DVD of WrestleMania. This one right there. The Paul Heyman one. <laughs> you know, and, I, and I'm glad that they put this stuff on the network. You know what I mean? That um, one I remember seeing on the network. Yeah, but I tell Damon's you, one I series, saw, mm-hmm. punks I saw, Jeff Hardy's I saw. Those are three are like off rip. I know, like yeah. Fun Definitely. story about the CM Punk one. Uh, mm. When me and uh, Dwayne was putting together our senior project, which is essentially a documentary trailer on the wrestling round, we was watching the CM Punk one. Like as we're doing like all the planning and we're filming some of the stuff that's um the trailer is on facebook so we have to send it to you but we're filming it and we got the punk dvd playing and we're sitting there like yo didn't know this or knew this you know the whole nine um another one of my favorite series though is uh ww untold you know i know that's on peacock that's, now that's good but just hearing those stories one you know you get to hear other stories and then really when they break down a match or rivalry or something. I always like love content like that. Is that the one where they had Sasha and Bailey talking about t- um, their takeover match? You so know, that's it. one of my favorites because I didn't. As much as I've watched that match mm-hmm. at nauseam, as much as I talked about, that's my favorite women's wrestling match of all time. That's the match mm-hmm. that got me to care about women's wrestling. That made me a Sasha fan for life. I didn't know they had very limited time to rehearse that, and it was basically they had to hide the finish because they didn't want anyone to critique it or make them audible it. Mm. So a lot of that was very like, we're going to go in the ring and do it. Yeah. They didn't really have time to do much because Sasha had press and all that stuff. And it was also like, that was still at a time where the guys were territorial over like yep. the women putting on bangers of matches or doing moves that like, now that they do this, I can't do this in my match. Or I'm about to do this mm-hmm. in my match. Told them not to do that stuff. I didn't know that was still going on at that time until they had that. I was like, oh, so not only did you give us this classic, but you basically had like minimum time for this shit. But that's nuggets that you don't hear otherwise. Yeah. Unless they're breaking that that type of stuff down. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and, and another one I definitely want to talk about when you think back to uh the network, uh, is one that got away from us because they gave us all these promo videos but they didn't finish it because they sold the peacock and that's wwe icons i'm still i want my british bulldog story like (laughs) you know what we should do we should do a uh top five episode like just top five wrestlers who are our favorites that was never world champion Ooh, that would be interesting. You know, I think that would be fun. Uh, we'll, we'll talk to the ladies about that. Um, 
Well, I'll put that in the notes after, well, once Dynamite, because right now, mm-hmm. the tag team match going on with Adam Cole, MJF, and Jericho Appreciation Society. Yeah. She says she loves it, so it looks like it's been uh, greenlit. But I would definitely be there because British Bulldog, I mean, y'all know, y'all already know. Everybody who knows me knows Bruce Barber Beefcake is one of my favorites. But British Bulldog, man, there like. There was a time where he was over like Rover. <laughs> There's a reason why he main event SummerSlam 92. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Um, But yeah, like icons, you know, we got the episode obviously on Yokozuna. That was great. Very happy to see Beth Phoenix get her flowers. Yes. Beth Phoenix is like Trish Stratus to me. Um, women that did not get the opportunity to do the cool stuff and they were built for it. They were about that life. I really wish, I, but I can also understand like if Beth didn't want like a run run, but I really wish she could. You know, this is the, the fan in me speaking, just strictly the fan. Uh, you know, I would love to see her like with a championship, you know, especially we never got that Becky, Beth Phoenix and Rhea Ripley feud. You know Beth what I mean? Phoenix huh? the Bel Air. Oh, oh my. Yeah. Facts. <laughs> F- facts. Um, it's one of those where it's like, you damn, you're just born in the wrong time. Like I do that in other sports too. Mm. Like for example, like my favorite basketball player of all time is Ray Allen. Ray Allen, really, the, the three point, yes, because even Jordan, as a Knicks fan, yes, because Jordan used to personally terrorize the Knicks and take fun and terrorizing the Knicks. So there was a time where I respected Jordan, but I hated his guts because that no, I respect that, 16. but just as a Knicks fan, like in Ray Allen, yeah, because he bounced around at that at that time. The Celtics and the Knicks weren't really like a huge rivalry, not like it's Yankees, Red Sox, or Giants, okay. Patriots, or Rangers, Bruins. Like Celtics mm. and Knicks is kind of like on the lower end of that Boston New York rivalry and stuff like that. Y'all's is Miami, right? Ours is Miami, Indiana, and Chicago. Okay. Because I like, get. Yeah. Oh. But Ray Allen was my guy because when younger me, like that mm-hmm. was my game. I wasn't, you know, blessed with speed like Iverson or could jump out the building like Vince Carter. Mine's is more like I could shoot all over the place like Ray Allen. I had critical leads, good form, and stuff like that. So. But Ray Allen had a game that's like, he went to the Hall of Fame, talented, but then it's one of those like, damn, if you were born in this era that Steph and Clay get to play in, where Ray wasn't able to get the green light to shoot like threes ad nauseum. Maybe he'll shoot like seven or eight a game versus you see guys in today's NBA that get to shoot like 15 or 20 a game. Mm -hmm. And this is something that Ray Allen was perfectly molded for the way the NBA is played, where it's faster. It's less hand checking, it's less defense. You're great at shooting threes, perfect, because this is where the game's at. Chuck him away. He'd be average like 40 points a game if he was born in today's NBA and not back yeah. in 96, where it's him, it's Kobe, mm-hmm. it's Iverson. You're also in there with Jordan and Pippen and Shaquille O'Neal and all that. If you were born in this era, man, your career would have been even special. And that's where someone like Beth Phoenix, someone like yeah. Natalia, someone like Trish Stratus. <laughs> Even some of the other divas where it's like, damn, if you came along during this women's revolution where you get to wrestle the four horsewomen, but you still have mm-hmm. five, seven years of your prime. Yeah. And, and that's the thing, you know, like I said, I definitely love the, what they did with Beth Phoenix. Uh, you know, just giving her her flowers. Um, did you watch Swerved? See, Queen PR has asked that to the people. I do remember watching it. I just can't remember episodes on the top of my head. Yeah, I <laughs> I barely remember it. Like uh, now, Scallywag, uh, Scallywag twenty six says, watch every episode. Tell me, tell us what y'all liked about it in the comments. Tell us what was some of your favorite episodes as we, um, you know, winding down. Have about ten minutes left here before the club shuts down. Um, you know, but like it's definitely um a lot of good stuff. I, I love what they have with WWE. Um. WWE, uh, what's the? I'm sorry. So MJF and <laughs> Adam Cole just won. That's what threw me off. Uh, but I definitely love that. You know, they do have like the stuff with A and E. You know, getting those original stories and everything. But uh, one of the things that I'm just in doing uh, for me personally that I love that was original. Uh, as I look to the screen, just where I was going, Broken Skull Sessions. 
Yeah. Uh, getting to see Stone Cold Steve Austin sit down with wrestlers talking about the good times. Like, if you, I was an Austin, I was a fan of Austin's podcast anyway. Yeah. Prior to that, like when he was on, um, was it podcast one? You know, and yeah. now, yeah, yeah I think you, it was him and Jericho. Yeah, him line. and Jericho was the two that was on there. Speaking and of, here comes Jericho on the screen. Right. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. Uh, but yeah, bringing him on the network, putting now you got the video element, you know. And then I always love when Stone Cold do this, and he's like pointing stuff, and then he <laughs> talk about, you know. So um, just stuff like that, you know. So I was always a huge fan of Broken Skull Sessions. Uh, you know, you get those stories. The episode that really like had broke the internet is the obvious one, Vince McMahon. You're talking Ooh. about. This is after a time when him, where CM Punk had probably been out less than a year oh, or yeah, two. That's right. It was and, you know, he just sits there, want to talk CM Punk, you know. Um, and he also had people mad at Vince, talking about the brass ring. And when he asked about Cesaro, because Austin was asking the questions, you know. And I get that he's on ESPN, who I'm about to bring up. But, man, would Pat McAfee cook? If the WWE Network was still around, would mm. Pat McAfee cook? I wish P was up here on stage because I know you know she's a huge fan of his. Uh, but I just think about like just like the content, like he's doing, you know, having Vince on there, having Brock Lesnar, he you know, Brock on a fucking podcast. You know how mm-hmm. hard that is to do. Yeah. <laughs> and and then when they put that on Peacock or the network with the video form, and you can tell like Stone Cold learned from like the podcast stuff to where like he was more fleshed out with how he presented it. Yeah. To where it was more fluid to where it's like, I'm gonna have all the horsemen, I'm gonna have Bubba Ray Dudley, mm-hmm. which is one of my personal favorites. I'm gonna have Undertaker on. Yeah. It's just like, yeah, Broken Skull is like one of the top three like best things that they have on there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but um, yeah, definitely um, bringing up two hundred five live and NXT UK, they definitely thrive with the network. Um, you know, that was uh very good for them. You know, I and you know NXT before it was on USA, it was definitely good. You know, I was one of the people early who, the reason why I subscribed to, N X uh subscribed to Hulu was because of NXT. Like I got wind that like they were cooking down there. And this is around the time Seth Rollins is champion. And I was like, all right, let me let me check this out. You know, and obviously, you know, Big E and then Bo Dallas and, um, you know, Neville. So, but yeah, it was uh, Hulu. It was NXT that got me to Hulu and everything. But um, for me, NXT was the opposite. It was the women. It was okay. who are the four horsewomen that I keep hearing about. Mm. And then people remember Paige came from NXT, huh? All right, so let me go back and watch NXT. And then the Charlotte and Natty one, where it's like, oh, so y'all putting on these bangers or the four, or the fatal uh, four with the, all four horsewomen, mm-hmm. where it's like, oh, y'all giving us these bangers. So while the women are struggling to get TV time on the main roster, the NXT women are putting on banger after banger. And sometimes they're not even on fucking takeovers, it's just regular TV and they're giving us bangers, where it's like, so that's where I was going for my women's wrestling content. And also, like, if the main roster stuff was redundant, because I ain't going to lie, Triple H, The Authority, y'all came this close to having me stop watching wrestling altogether again. Because that Authority mm. shit was driving me insane. 30-minute promos, corporate game, big show, all this shit. And it was just like, ugh, this makes me not want to watch the, the, uh, the content. But then NXT was a saving grace where it's like, yo, the women are put on bangers, and then that's where I stick around for the guys. Mm-hmm. Yep, facts. But um, we already uh wind things down. Any last thoughts for you, Justin? Any last shows that we didn't mention for from the WWE network? So I said the 24 series is my favorite, but then there's mm-hmm. also Chronicle, there's also mm-hmm. W365. One of my mm-hmm. favorites is Kevin Owens. When Kevin Owens was the uh, Universal Champion, he loses the okay. belt, goes into WrestleMania 33. That's the infamous, Vince, did you like my match? And, <laughs> really. 
Yo, he and looks then, so sad. And Jericho probably is like, oh, man, whatever. Vince didn't care, but yo, he looks so sad, bro. He did, and but then at the for at the end for it to come around where they have like a banger, and then Vince is like, that's the match I wanted you to have. That was great. But the their documentaries are second to none. When people say like, yo, W should be nominated for an Emmy for this or that, it's always the documentaries I always go back to because they're fucking phenomenal from start to end. Whoever puts those together. You make me care about wrestlers more. Like, I never cared about Goldberg until I saw the 24 on Goldberg. And mm-hmm. I'm like, you're still not my favorite, but at least fuck with you now. Facts. What about yeah. you? What are some of your favorites that we didn't touch on? Um, Those are the ones that really jump out. Obviously, WrestleMania Rewind, you know, I consider myself a WrestleMania aficionado. So that one. Um, I love the fact that Total, Be- Total Bellas and Total Divas was on there. Uh, the Undertaker's Thanks. last ride because you got to see like a different side. WWE Timeline, that's another one, you know, and WWE Chronicle. So, you know, uh, with Chronicle for me, it was the Bianca Belair episode and the Jay Uso episode. Yeah. So, those are some things. And like I said, I know a lot of some of the stuff runs into Peacock, thankfully, but I would definitely love Do to see. Do they have Edge and Christian Rick of Awesomeness? Uh, was that on the network? It, it was. was. <laughs> you, you, you know what? You just reminded me because, funny story, that's how my son learned who Urkel was. Wait. wait. Explain. Mind you, he's born in 2009. So, Joe. but he was, Edge is his favorite wrestler. But by him watching that, he learned who Urkel was because they would make references. Ah. <laughs> so. Um, and if you're born at the 2000, you don't get the the Steve Urkel mania. No, like you don't not under, at all. You don't understand family and I do that. and how like Urkel was over. Mm-hmm. Like he may he may have been not stone cold over, but he was like rock over. Where it was right there if he wasn't the top guy, he was right there. Mm-hmm. But yeah, Urkel was definitely T G I F says uh, Wealth Warrior. Dad's the, taking it back. We're like, we were inside. You had, was it yep. Family Matters step by step in like another show? Full House. Or, I mean, not Full House. Wait, Full House. I think Full House was one. And um, Boy Meets World. That's when Fresh Prince was on prime time. That's when mm-hmm. I was, what, during the 90s when Martin was on prime time. Living yeah, Super Martin used to come time. on Thursdays. Yeah, because Martin used to have the Fox lineup. So it was Martin Living Single New York undercover. Yep. Facts. <laughs> uh, well, this is the years in which I skipped SummerSlam at the Barclay because I'd rather go to NXT Takeover Brooklyn cheaper and better. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, Topanga, the best ever, and a wrestling fan. We know, um, mm-hmm. you know the people who love Topanga. Um, but yeah, shout out to uh, Rakasha, um, jumping in, telling Queen PR I understand she's there with us. Uh, is there? Urkel was a role player and became the main star over as fuck. That he was. is he was true. supposed to be the main star, but Mm-mm. he got over and didn't the father get jealous or something? I'm not sure. We may have to do our Googles on that. I do remember Urkel was only supposed to be like a smaller thing, but he got over to where they rewrote Thailand as to make Urkel more of a thing. Mm-hmm. But yeah, but yeah, we gotta get out of here. But before we go. You know, we got to pay homage to the brand new Impact Knockouts champion, the one and only Trinity. Congratulations to her winning the Knockouts Championship, defeating Deanna Perrazzo. And then because Justin put these in the chat, let's just show the greatness that is Trinity Fatu. Just... um. For all you haters out there that said she was making a bad decision and not staying in the WWE and walking out and how was she going to follow her own? She living, she thriving, she outside, she everywhere. So congratulations to her. Justin. Yes, sir. Always a pleasure, my brother. It's always a pleasure to create content. You know the deal. Let the people know, as Queen PR would say, we have an order. 
So let the people know <laughs> where they can find you. <laughs> and before I get to my order, first shout out, sending love to Siendo, who's not here for this one, but hope to see you next week. We love you, friend. So We're y'all make sure y'all subscribe to her page. Of course, we got to plug our friend. Even though she's not in the fan club today, she's still a part of the fan club, just like Queen PR. You know, the <clears> Matrix <throat> was acting up, but that's why she in the comments letting them know, like, yo, I'm still here. I'm still active. And look mm-hmm. at, speaking of people who should get their flowers, Facts. Willow Nightingale. Mm-hmm. Didn't she win something important? Um, I it? believe so. She did. She won the Owen Hart Invitational. And she will get another shot at the um, women's uh, championship, the Ring of Honor Women's Championship. This ain't trying to let me be great because I'm trying to get Willow. There we go. I'm like, I'm trying to get Willow her flowers, but it wasn't trying to let me be great. Shout out to her. Shout out to Ricky Starks, too. Um, you know, Black Excellence showed in the Owens Hart Invitational. So as as Justin does the pose, uh, as, as this is not leaving the screen, there it is, there it is, folks. But um, yeah, as you know, definitely, <laughs> uh, definitely shout out to CN Doll. Make sure y'all subscribe to her page, Justin. Uh, you can your, your plugs. I know you was in the middle. Boom. So you can find me on all social media platforms. I gotta change that thumbnail. Okay? Man, <laughs> we, we have come a long way since then. We're gonna we're gonna send this to Brian in the group chat to update that, but. You can find me on all social media platforms. It's Justin Rich. You can find me here Wednesday nights from 7 to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Twitch for a TWG fan club with myself and my three beautiful, illustrious co-hosts when they have working internet and time to do this where there's no issues. But shout out to my co-hosts because, hey, it takes the four of us. It takes a nation to put on this amazing show for you guys. Uh, you can catch me from time to time. Twitter Spaces, Tuesday nights. for I'm... Um, around 6.35 p.m. for Turnbuckle Talk with me and Corey, where we talk all things wrestling. They just came back this week. We had a nice, spirited conversation about tag team wrestling in WWE. Mm. The state of it, men's and women's, and where we think it's going. You can also catch me from time to time on True Hill Heat Sports and True Hill Heat Wrestling, both of those channels located on YouTube. We talk sports, wrestling, and all that fun stuff. We here, we outside, we active. Salute to Trinity, becoming our knockouts champion. Salute to Willow Nightingale. Man, this was such an excellent fucking weekend. Yes. And shout out to Trent for, I believe those pictures come from a magazine spread that she just done recently that she put out on social media. So Mm -hmm. just black excellence. Let's go. Black excellence for sure. Uh, She was in the Sean magazine. So shout out to her. Um, y'all know y'all can find me Brian H. Waters on all social media platforms, including Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, Threads, Spill, Facebook. Um, make sure you check me out this week. The Mass Man Show. I, I do a quick run in, quick conversation with David Kaz. But more importantly, well, I shouldn't say more importantly, but you know, more more commentary as I bring up my converse, my thoughts, how the AW title is more equivalent to the NXT title rather than a WWE title. I did that on Wednesday Worldwide. And we also talked about whether or not the Bloodline story would have survived in the Attitude Era. So make sure y'all check that out on Wednesday Worldwide. This week we was me, Ben, and David Shoemaker as Cal was on vacation. So we sending him all fun hopes. And then also check me out tonight. 10 30 p.m. Eastern time at the Wrestling Realm. Wrestling Realm now. We have the one and only Miss Janelle from HR. She's stopping through her tour as she will, of course, talk Battle Club Pro Jobber Slam 3. Can't wait for that. I will be in NYC for that one. So we're going to get you out of here in time so you can watch the blood and guts, brother. Um, until the next time, folks, make sure y'all have already hit the subscribe. Hit, well, hit the follow button right here on Twitch, but also hit the subscribe. You know, um, subscribe to that. Subscribe to those Wrestling Girls Patreon. Follow at TW, at T Wrestling Girls on Twitter, at those Wrestling Girls on Instagram and threads. And make sure you like the Facebook page, those Wrestling Girls. And make sure you follow, you join the Facebook discussion group. But follow Queen PR at Queen underscore three underscores PR and at 
Krista B on Twitter at Krista, Miss Krista underscore B. Miss underscore K R I S T A B. <laughs> and add the extra underscore at the end on Instagram. So long, everybody. We are out and the club is officially closed. Peace. Mm. Oh. <laughs> <laughs>